Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Reich. Uh, we're about to get started here in just a few minutes. Tommy's about to hop on, but uh, are you guys in the new training class? Christy and Brian, what's up, guys? How are you doing today? Doing good. Tasha should be here too, I believe. Who? Tasha. Tasha? Awesome. Cool. I'm sorry. I'm not too familiar with the training class right now. I have a, um, no, that's okay. She probably just hasn't hopped on yet. Awesome, awesome. So how's training going for you guys? This is the end of the first week, right? Mm-hmm. That's good. How's everything going? Did you guys, uh, who's training you there, Christy? Um, I'm working with Drew. Awesome. Drew's, uh, Drew's the best, you know. I always call him Drewski, but uh, I just really, <laughs> really, nice, really nice guy. He's always really funny, really into sports, love him. And what about you, Brian? Uh, yeah. yeah. My, uh, you should show the put the camera on your face, man. Show some face. Uh, I hate to, I hate to just talk to a name, right? <laughs> hey, what's up, Brian? How you doing today, man? All right. Good, good. I like your background. Are you? That's a uh, cool. Were you like in a in like an office in like downtown or something? That's awesome. <laughs> How's training class going for you, Brian? Going all right. That's good to hear. Uh, uh, who's uh, training you? I'm part of Casey's team. Casey, I love Casey. And uh, you guys can't see, but Steven's here as well. Steven, I want to say what's up to these guys. I'm, I'm sure they can hear you. Hey, what's up, guys? Looking forward to working with you and talking to you more. Cool, cool. Yeah, time is just about to start here, but. Uh, what, what were you guys going on? Have you guys uh, seen any sits in yet? Have you guys been in some sits? I saw one. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, so it's going again. So you know how there's like March Madness going on right now? What? You know how like there's the March Madness competition going on right now? Yeah. Yeah, so Drew's going against my MGA. So we're like all like super competitive right now, button heads. <laughs> Have you been in the office? Are you guys located in Illinois? Uh, no, I'm in Colorado. Oh, that's awesome. What part of Colorado? Grand Junction. I, I don't know where that is. It's uh, closer to Utah. It's not very pretty. It's, it's, okay. it's, the, it's the less pretty part of the state. Okay. 
Well, I'm sure, you know, in Colorado, so Colorado, always a good time. She can go anywhere and start hiking. I know Utah is really, really pretty. Like, there's like a bunch of like really cool hiking spots, all that stuff over there, too. Hmm. What, what about you, Brian? Are you, are you from Illinois as well? I'm from Illinois, but I'm, I live down at the southern end. So, oh, I'm not wow. Cool. Uh, Springfield or something. Man, that's, that's crazy. Have you been in the office? No. Oh, no. <laughs> that makes sense. About five hours away from me. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, one time I was, I was all the way down by you before, and that was really cool. And I was working with, like, a bunch of union families down there. That was really cool, too. Where were you at? Too, right? Yeah. I love yeah, I've been, like, DeKalb, like, Rockford area. DeKalb's really cool. There's a lot of nice guys there. Uh, nice union families. But uh, that's awesome. I'm glad you guys like in training class. Uh, who did training class yesterday? Drew. Drew? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. That's good to hear, guys. Well, be sure to watch out. You know, you guys are getting in the group chat here in a little bit. We're going to write, everyone's about to write really, really big business here this weekend. Uh, I know Casey's got some deals already lined up, set for him. And have you met Mason there, Brian? Uh, Briefly. Briefly. Hey, Mason's one, one, one real cool guy, man. You, I definitely introduce yourself to him. He's a – he'll talk. He'll talk always, but he's such a good conversationalist, so it's always so fun to talk. So just fun to talk to him about one-of-a-kind one kind of guy. Uh, I'll say that. But And, you know, you got – on Drew's team, Tommy is like your essay, correct? Yeah? I don't know. Don't know. All right, cool. Are you one of uh, Lita's friends? Hmm? Are you are you one of Lita's friends by any chance? Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I see Lita popping off in the group chat all the time, so I'm familiar with her. I'm like, hey, that's awesome. Yeah, she's going crazy. I see. I think she like wrote up a deal this the other day or something like that too for like a thousand or two thousand ALP, something like that. Yeah. But that's cool. How how do you and Lita know each other? Just, just like friends from back in the day or something? Um, we actually got to know each other this last year or so when she, That's when she cool. moved back. Honestly, I don't, I, I don't really know Lita either. So I, <laughs> I was just asking to ask. <laughs> That's cool. And Brian, how'd you kind of get into there? Did you, uh, did you see, uh, like, a like an ad or anything? Or did someone like, uh, talk to you about the opportunity? Uh, it was on indeed.com. Awesome. Yeah, I got into Indeed as well. I, I started about like uh, like eight, nine months ago, guys. And I'm telling you, the opportunity is crazy here, like sincerely crazy. I started like eight months ago. I'm a GA. I have like a team of like 10 people. It's, it's crazy, dude. And, and the growth here is amazing. The coach is just amazing. I, I, I don't know if you guys were in the last like two agency meetings. We're giving away like 20 grand this month. So it's about to be insane. Better watch out. You're going to see me up there on the agency meeting winning that, some of that money. <laughs> and Steven, too. What's up, boss? You're going to win some of that money, aren't you? Uh, absolutely. I'm absolutely. I'm going to win all of it. What all are you of talking it. about? All of it. It's None all of it. you stand a chance. <laughs> That's the competitiveness. Let's go. Well, that's good to hear, guys. Other than that, how's, do you guys have anything planned for the weekend? Um... I'm not really sure what the schedule is for this, so I haven't made any plans. Okay. Yeah, you guys are probably you booked up like uh, real hard yesterday and everything, right? Good call. Mm -hmm. good call right? Yeah. Uh, okay, well, I'll, I'll let the boss take it over from here. You guys have a good day, all right? You too. Thanks, Ray. What's this doing for you? All right. So you guys can hear us pretty good then? Mm -hmm. uh, usually we'll mic up, but... Seems like audio is pretty okay for now. All right, so today marks day five of training. We started off on Monday. Remember you guys were in the HC meeting, went over a lot of notes on Monday, went over some numbers, if you guys could remember. And if you can, pull up your notes, pull up your notes. Um, one thing that I went over this morning with the people that are, are in the free license right now, so there's people that are studying to get their license to, to start with us in, in one of the training classes that we're going to have next month. I told them um, what you want to do, well, what I did, okay, and this is what I would, I would advise someone to do, so I did, is, is to get a hardback notebook. So um, I used to have paper notebooks 
And for the first few years of my career, I was using those yellow legal pads. And, and after I filled up a legal pad, I set it aside. And you know, you know my, how, much, how much notes were in that? I had people that were, were millionaires that were speaking to me and, and, and other people in the room was group of people, you know, but I had a chance to be part of these meetings where, where people who are millionaires that have years of experience, they're like, hey, listen, if I could sum up the last 15 years, I could give it to you in 15 minutes. So I'm getting this awesome opportunity where in a 15 minute time period, I'm getting doused with millions of dollars of information that would have taken me 15 years to have learned the hard way. And I get it all, and I put it in this notebook, right? And then I take that notebook and I set it aside. And then I stack another one on top of it. And then I have to move the notebook to this side of my desk. And then I stick it over here. And then I move it over here. And then the front page gets ripped off, right? And then the second page gets all wrinkled and that page gets ripped off. And half the pages of, of my notebooks end up falling out. And I end up losing a lot of notes that way. So what I learned when I came here is uh, what I did is I got a hardback notebook. If I could, I'd, I'd run over to my office right now and show you, okay? But I have stack of four or five hardback notebooks, right? And each year I'd get a new one because I would fill it up. I could go right now and pull up. I have notes from July of 2008 still 100% intact, like not even damaged, like it's perfect. And it's on a hardback notebook. So hardback notebooks are like 10 or 15, maybe even 20 bucks, right? If you go to an office depot. So I would recommend for you guys to just um, start whatever you do from this point moving forward, start putting in a hardback notebook so that you'll always be able to go back to it. And I was like, you're going to be building something very big. You're going to be building something very special. And one day, someone is going to come to you. Maybe it's your grandkids. Your grandkids are going to be sitting on your lap. And you're going to be sitting by the fire. And you're going to have this big, like, library. You know, not even, you ever see, like, those houses? There's, like, a, like my office at my house is pretty nice. It's like a nice home office, you know? But I'm talking about like a library that like has a second level. You can walk up and there's like tables and desks and like in your house, right? So you just, you know, all your grandkids are sitting around, you know, one of your grandkids and you're telling stories to the grandkids. And one of them like, hey, Pat, hey, granddaddy, hey, Nanu, no, no, hey, how, abuelo, how, uh, how did you do all of this? Where did this all come from? This is your vision, right? And you have to tell your great, great, great grandkids or great grandkids where this all came from, right? So you want to know what? It's in these books, guys. Every single meeting that I attended, all the wisdom that I was taught over the years is in these books right here, stacked up. And I'm going to be able to give them Whoever that person is, could be you. Hopefully it's me. You come, in my, you come in my office one day and you're like, hey, Tommy, how did this all start? I can tell you, all right, well, here's what I did. Day one, I was see, right here. I had a meeting with this guy and we talked about this. Three days later on Thursday, we met with our state director and this is what we went over. Then we had a guy come in the very next day and talk to us about this. Then you can see next week on Monday, we had an agency meeting and this is what we went over in our agency meeting. Then on Thursday, we had a manager's meeting. This is what the man I could tell you every single step of the way, what we did, what was said, what was taught to us, right? So at the end of this thing, what are you building? Are you building something that, you know, let me put it on some floppy uh, notebooks that's gonna break and fall apart. Or are you putting on something that's hardback that's gonna be there forever, you know? When you write Wait. words and those words are going to be there forever, you're going to write them a little differently. They're going to stick a little different. You're going to write them a little more clear, a little neater, with a little bit more purpose. 
right? So I, that's my big thing on the notebooks. You know, I think um, note takers, they say, what note takers are money makers. Note takers are money makers. Okay, so, um, so Monday, uh, you know, hopefully you have good notes from every day of the week, something that you can go back to. And if you get into a pinch or you're confused, you're not sure what to do, you can go right back into your notes on that day and get some pointers, get some clarity. Uh, so you, you don't really have to think or create it on your own. There's a system that we already have and boom, it's, it's, it's right, right there for you. So um, on Monday, if you could pull up your notes, is there any questions that uh, anybody has? Um, really quick. Tasha's waiting in the waiting room. Oh, really? I apologize. How do I do that? Let me see here. I got to go to uh, participants. No, nobody's in there. Um, she said that she was. Hang on, let me give her a call because she just sent me a text that she was in there. Oh, OK. Thank you for letting me know. I, I'm looking. So. Soon as she is ready or she's on, definitely let me know. I'll keep an eye out for it right over. She said that she's in the waiting room. Which link did you do? The original one? Okay, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what. Here, here's the here is the issue, guys. They logged in. Um, it was logged in in my home, in my in my computer, in my office. So that's why on the left, that's why on the screen it says the Vena Agency. That's the issue. So I have to go run next door, Ma. It's like three. Uh, and okay. Let her in, if that makes any sense. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. Um. He's going. Everything happens for a reason. Remember I said I should run into my office and grab those? So that situation just forced that to happen. So I told you, see these hardbacks, right? So these are all the notebooks, you know, that I started out using these. And I will tell you that you'll notice these probably run up until like 2000 and 11 2012 probably one per year like eight nine ten eleven but right in like 2012 we all got ipads i don't know if you remember the ipads when they came out how big and popular it was so we stopped taking notes on here and i would be in meetings and now we take notes on my ipad and it was like the cool thing to do you know i downloaded evernote which i still use today i like evernote um but uh, I switched back a few, a few years ago and I started going back to hardbacks. So this is the one I carry around now, you know, but um, basically uh, I could even show you real quick. What is, what's the date on this one? This is from a recognition meeting from 117, 2011, right? Guess who the MVP was? Casey Kunach. Who's the MVP? Uh, stay away from doomers and gloomers. The key is for you not to be one yourself. If you sleep with dogs, you're going to wake up with fleas. You are the company you keep. If you want to get, you have to figure out a, a way to give. RPM, results purpose and massive action. Life is short, short, don't complicate it. We don't have a problem achieving goals. We have a problem with setting them. 
Your mind doesn't decipher between what's real and not real. It just takes info. You need a support staff. Purpose. Why do you want what you want? And these are the notes that I have written down from 10 years ago. It's not what you've done, but what you are doing now. Don't look at what you don't have. Be grateful for what you do have. If he can do it, why can't I? Don't be afraid to be passionate in the home. Be clear and passionate. Get chills down your spine. So literally, this is from that. So I have that. I'll go further. Look at this. What's this date? Told you. July 16. July 16, 2008. I was talking to Todd Murata. He said, have narrow goals, inspect, inspect, inspire, and motivate. So the nice thing is I'll never lose these goals. I'll never, I'll never lose these notes. I mean, you know, and I, I just want you guys to, to take, you know, what you're doing that serious, right? And that's how serious I took it back in 2008 before I got paid a nickel with this company, right? So, so you can't wait until you're getting paid professional income and then start saying, you know, I'm going to start treating this like a professional career. I'm going to start acting like a professional. I'm going to start being a professional. Once they start paying me professional income, I'll start acting like a professional. And obviously, guys, we know that's, that's not the best approach. That's not the right mindset. That's almost like backwards. You know, we call that like hustling backwards, you know, um, the uh, mindset needs to be, you want to dress for the job that you want, dress for the position that you want, not for the position that you have, right? You got to be acting like a professional for long periods of time before you ever start earning professional income. And it's not a matter of if, but it's a matter of when. You say, when they, when they make me a leader, I'll start acting like a leader. And once again, we know that's hustling backwards. You want to act like a leader for an extended period of time, long time. And eventually, you're going to be a leader. You're going to be the leader. So just remember that. Um, and, and, and that's kind of what, 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 you know, went on with the notes. Like I took everything very seriously. Like everything that was being said to me and taught was like millions of dollars of information. And if I missed one thing, that could be the one thing that cost me everything. And I didn't want to be missing that one thing. So I was like super like detail oriented And I just felt like more weight on everything. Like when the words carried, there was more weight. When I was walking, there was more purpose to where I was going, to what I was saying, to who I was talking to, to what I was thinking, to, you know, to where there was a lot riding on this for me, at least. Because the way I did it is, is on Monday, I broke down the numbers for you guys. Um, but, you know, we went over it pretty quickly. And uh, you're going to have to really dive in and go. I'll go over them again today if you guys want. We'll go right back over the whole lesson again if you want. Uh, I think it's so important to understand that the numbers <coughs> And, and really how, how, how simple it is, right? And, um, you know, that you hear a kiss, right? Kiss, kiss, K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple, stupid, some people call it. Some people say keep it simple for success, right? Uh, uh, we, you know, I could call it, you know, you do it here, right? You could call it, we have what's called the keep it simple system. Just keep it simple and put it on the system. Our system is pretty cut and dry. It's rather barbaric if you think about it. It's not very fancy. There's not really any um, you know, fake moves or juke moves. It's pretty much hand the ball off and run the ball down the field and then do that more than the other team and we win. Like, think about this. If you make, I want you to think about this, guys. Come on, think about this. You thinking? You guys thinking? Think, ready? Ready? And, and here's the, we're going to think really hard and we're going to find out 
there's nothing to even think about. So watch this, ready? Um, whoever, think about it, tonight, tomorrow, this week, this week, this month, tonight, today, for the next hour, okay? Over the next hour, whoever makes the most phone calls, over the next week, over the next week, whoever makes the most phone calls, right? Over this next week is probably going to what? Second most parties. They're probably, no, no, no. They're probably gonna talk to the most people, right? That's what's gonna happen next. Think about it. If I make more phone calls you, I'm probably gonna what? Probably gonna talk to more people. Pretty, it's pretty simple. And, but now, now we'll go, whoever talks to the most people, whoever talks to the most people is probably going to what? Set the most appointments, right? Whoever sets the most appointments, if I set more appointments than you, who's going to probably give more presentations? What do you think? Whoever sets more appointments is probably going to give more presentations. Whoever gives, if I give more, whoever, if you give more presentations than me, what do you think is going to happen? At the end of the week, you just saw more people than I saw. You're probably going to what? You're probably going to collect more referrals than I collect. And that's going to turn into you setting more appointments and seeing more people and collecting more referrals. And it turns into this crazy referral trade and a lot of activity spurs from that. On top of that, if you see more people than me, you're probably going to what? Sell more people than me. If you sell more sales than me, you're probably going to have more ALP than me. So it's pretty barbaric because if you were like, I wonder who the top of the chain is. Wonder who like the, the best was for the week. I mean, if you went back to the Stone Age, back to the cavemen, the best person was probably like the biggest guy who had the... The, the two biggest, you know, uh, drums who can beat up the most people, period. That's, that's pretty barbaric. And then you're, you're the king of the gap castle and, you know, and then there's, that's how it would work. Now I'm not saying it, but I'm just saying like bar, I'm just thinking like barbaric, like how, how pretty plain and simple it is. Like if I can find a way to just make more phone calls than you, I just find a way to do it. Ashley Miza is our top producer. She makes more phone calls than, 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 than the person who's in second place. That's, that's it. She's not a ninja that goes out there with two appointments and writes more than everybody. She makes more phone calls. So therefore, she actually talks to more people, sets more appointments, and sees more people on a weekly basis. Her activity level is higher. That means she's stronger than someone else who's not strong enough to make that many phone calls, to give that many presentations. Just like someone who does, who's stronger? Someone who can do 10 pull-ups or someone who can do 20 pull-ups? 20, right? Well, that's like strength. Who could, if you can only make 500 phone calls and she can make a thousand, she's, she's definitely stronger. What you gotta do, if you wanna catch up to her, is you gotta what? Make more phone calls. Yeah, you gotta get stronger. You gotta get stronger. You know, you can get better and find ways to make more phone calls. Find ways like, you know what? If I add a, an extra hour in over here, or if I kind of, oh, if I do this on my calls, I can get three extra calls in per hour here, you know, and you start to find ways to get better and shave inches off. And, you know, before you know it, you kept getting these, these percentages on your, on your, on your, uh, on your side. So um, that's pretty simple right there. I mean, talk about keeping it simple, right? And then along the way, there's certain systems and processes and procedures, you know, to, all right, now you say making the phone calls. Well, how do I make the phone calls? Setting the appointments. Well, how do I set these appointments? Making the sales. Well, how do I make the sales? Collect the referrals. Well, how do I collect the referrals? Because there's also a process to that, you know? So we got to get in and master that, that process. Um, so, you know, sticking to Monday, just because I think it's such an important thing is just knowing, like I understood when I came in, I knew what was on the line. I knew, you know, that, if I did this and this and this, and then I was able to train somebody to do this, this, and this, you know, and then I was able to train, you know, five people to do that. And then I was able to develop them. And then we could actually work together as a team. And now like, cause if I'm training somebody, I could train a couple people, you know, but what if I was able to, um, you know, have, uh, you know, Casey and Reich and now their supervisors, 
plus I'm a manager. And now all three of us can train at a time. We're going to be able to train three times as fast. We're going to be able to grow three times as fast because I'm not going to be the only one training. So, you know, my vision was like, wow, if I can get them to train and I can also train, now me and my team can be trained a lot better, right? You know, someone's like, well, you know, looks like if you do, it looks like it's like a, a, an MLM. I'm like, what's an MLM? Do you even know what that stands for? Does anybody know what MLM even stands for? Multi-level marketing. Multi-level marketing, exactly, right? I said, you know multi-level marketing is? It's exactly like it sounds called multi-level marketing. So guess what you have to do? Market. You have to be, you know what you have to be doing? You have to be marketing. That's what the whole thing, you're marketing products, all right? Over here, we're not marketing anything. This is called a life insurance company. We're in the financial services industry, okay? This has nothing to do with multi-levels. It has nothing to do with marketing. In fact, our company is to spend one nickel on marketing or advertisement. You'll never see us on a commercial, a billboard, a TV advertisement, or a radio, or anything at all. We don't spend a nickel on advertising. All those other insurance companies out there, hey, maybe they are more like a marketing company. Maybe they are. I don't know. I see you know, all kinds of critters, foxes, emus, you know, gizmos, gadgets, geckos, ducks, and any other kind of thing floating across the screen. We all know that that costs a lot of money for those ads. Hundreds of millions of dollars is being spent annually from these companies on advertising. Who do you think is really paying for that, right? So on the side though, uh, our company, we're a life insurance company and we actually have our own home office. We have our, have our own underwriting. You know, we have our own independent staff and we issue all of our own life insurance policies. You can look, look it up. We've been around for seven years. Actually, we're the largest life insurance company in the United States. So um, we're not even close to a multi-level marketing because there's not multi-levels here as well. Number one, we don't market anything. Number two, there's not multi-levels. There are a few positions within our organization that you can get promoted into, but we only promote from within. And it's all based upon results and results based. So uh, in some of those positions, you can earn promotions and, and have a chance to lead and train and manage and develop teams of people. Uh, but there, there's no multi-levels to that. Um, you know, so, you know, I, ha I had to explain that to people before. They just don't understand. So when I, when I understood, you know, the, the, the path, I found that the path was pretty much all maps. You have to know what to do. So real quick, quick. What do you guys got to do to get promoted to a supervisor? Make a certain amount of, what is it, 24,000 in three months in the quarter? You got it, 24,000 over any rolling 90 day period, okay? So it is not limited to that though. You can do 24,000 over 60 days and get it done quicker, you know? It's gonna be me. I, I always, um, you know, my, my thing is my, my first month was July of 2008, just like I was looking at the notes in that notebook here. Uh, I did 24,000 that month and it pretty much knocked my number out my first month. Also, I brought in 10 people. So there was no question about getting me promoted. So you want to put yourself in a position where you can't be denied. Like nobody could even say a word when you do your essay numbers in, in a month and you bring in 10 people. Um, and there was no personal recruit bonus at the time. You know, so that was my first month in the business. I made $12,000, brought in about 10 people. Uh, and then the next month, you know, I was promoted. I brought in another 10 people. And then before you know it, I was, I was a GA after three months, you know, in my fourth month as a GA, we we're doing 70,000 for the month. And, um, and I was pretty much on the way to, you know, hitting what my goal was for initially was when I came in, I wanted to be an MGA. So it was 24,000 over 90 days of personal production. You become an SA. You can also speed that up when you bring in what? personal recruits when you start getting the leadership is like this if you came into the door and then you had six other people following you right behind you guess what i'm thinking must be a leader this dude must be some sort of leader in some facet some way shape or form he has some leadership she has some leadership in her because when she came in there was 10 other people that she just just followed her followed her that she brought in right so you got to think about the the uh, you know the impact that it made when I showed up. I was serious, took everything very seriously, and I delivered. I wrote twenty four thousand, and then on top of that, 
you know, I brought in 10 people, you know, they're like this, they're got it. Even I, he hasn't led anybody in this business yet, but he has to be able to lead at some level since he was able to influence because leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less, says John Maxwell. So leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. That's all it is, you know? So anyways, I did that. And then, and then, you know, uh, it just catapulted me right, right into to, to becoming an MGA. Um, but understanding the numbers was key. So when you're an SA, what do you got to do to be a GA? You got to do 90,000 over 90 days. When you're a GA, what do you got to do? 180,000 over 90 days. But you have to know, you know how to do that, right? Well, basically to do 24,000 over 90 days is basically just 8,000 a month. And that's basically 2,000 a week. So that's easy. Now to go from an SA to a GA, you got to have three people all do 2,000 a week. That's 6,000 plus you got to do 2,000. That would be 8,000 for a week. So if you do 8,000 a week as a team, two from you, six from your, your three guys, that's going to put you at what? 8,000 times four to put you at 32,000 a month. And if your team's doing 32,000 a month, three months of that in a row will be 90,000. And that'll get you in position to be promoted to the GA. And then the GA is 180,000 over 90 days. So the number on that is like eight, eight. So all you have to have is eight individuals doing 2,000 a week and eight times two is uh, 16,000 a week. And 16,000 a week is 64,000 a month. And if you're doing 64,000 a month for three months, that is 196,000. And you only need 180 to go from a GA to an MGA. So you're good. You're hitting your numbers right there. That's without any personal production yourself. And then uh, when you're an MGA, now you uh, are the head of your team. You're the head coach. You're in your charge of hiring, training, developing, mentoring, uh, the promoting people. And... Uh, when you promote your GA to an MGA, you become the RGA. And when you become the RGA, you make the exact same bonus that the MGA makes and, and it's, it's the pay as a RGA just goes up significantly, pretty much. So that's the process to you know, growing, getting promoted. And like I said, the path is pretty much all math. So um, keeping it simple, what are the numbers? What's the, what's the uh, activity that we need to be able to put in to make this happen? So on Tuesday, we should have went over some activity, right? So how many calls, what's that? 150 phone calls. 150 phone calls. Uh, Three appointments. Per day, per week, or what? Per day. We got 150 phone calls a day, is what you're saying, okay. Um, how many days a week? Well, I would do seven, but uh, we only have two call days. Mm -hmm. so, so it's two days a week. Yes. So what we got to figure out now is in order for me to, let's just use average 10. If you want to be able to give 10 presentations a week, strictly off of leads, which you should never be relying on. Okay. But when you get started, you may be your first week or something, you're running all leads, but you got to get on referrals. You have to be given at least half your presentations from referrals. Okay? You have to. I'll show you how to do that in a second, okay? But uh, 10 presentations. So is there a black? This is green. I don't even know you remember to see this. That's all right. Well, I'll put it up here. So 10. 10. If I want to see 10 people, okay? Um, the way it works is we're going to set half the people that we talk to. So I'm going to have to talk to how many people? 20. 20. So we're going to have to talk to 20, right? And in order to talk to one, uh, in order to talk to one person, how many calls is it? I don't know. 15. 15 
to one. So I'm gonna have to make 15 calls in order to talk to one person. I need to talk to 20 people. So how many calls do I need to make? This is what? 15 times 20? 15 times 20. It's 300. 300 calls. Is that right? Okay. I'm off somehow because it's supposed to be 600. So let me figure this out. So here, let me go back real quick. I apologize. So if we make 600 calls, okay, it takes us two talk tos to get one set. Two talk tos to get one set. Right? Two talk tos to get one set. So this is supposed to be 40. That's why it's wrong. It's supposed to be 40. Well, two talk tos to get one set. Um, so, so it takes us 15 calls to get one talk to. So that means it's going to take us and two talk tos to get one set. So that's what? 30 talk tos to get one set. Does that make sense? No, I'm sorry, 30 calls. 30 calls. 15 calls to get a talk to, two talk tos to get one set. So you got calls, that's, I apologize guys. I, uh, I went back. Backwards, I try to go backwards and I never go backwards. I always go forwards. So if you start with simply like this, just say like this, calls, talk to's, sets, scene. Right? So it's, it's 600 calls is, is going to give you 20 talk to's and that's going to give you 10 set. I'm sorry. It's going to give us forty talk tos, twenty set, and seen. Talk tos is in people who just answer the phone and talk to us. Yes. Set as in appointments we set, and then seeing people we actually sit down and give presentations to. Yes. Okay. Yes. So the ratio. Is 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 fifteen, and the ratio is thirty. And that that's what it is. So it's fifteen calls to get a talk to, thirty calls to get a set. Sixty calls to get a scene. 60 calls to get a scene. You got it. So now if you made 900 calls for a week, then you would talk to 60 people. You would set 30 and you see 15. Now, what would you make off of this is if you saw 10 people, if you saw 10 people, you'd enroll three. If you saw 15 people, you'd enroll five. If you enroll three, what's the, what's the ALP on these? Average is 833, right? 800, we'll call it to keep it simple. So three times 800 would be 2,400 ALP, and you would make what? $1,200. Uh, $1,200, okay. So let's use this top example. $1,200 is what you made for the week. Okay. Um, how much per presentation did you make? You gave 10 presentations and you made $1,200. Okay. 
$120. You're making $120 every time you sit down in front of somebody. So I just want you to put your mind, so sometimes you can play tricks on yourself or just play a different game. You know what? I'm just going to give as many presentations as I can for the week because every time I give a presentation, I know I'm making an average of $120. So if I give 10, I'll make 12. What if, if I give 20 presentations, I'll probably make about $2,400, you know? So that's one thing to know. Now you go to set. How much money every time that you set an appointment? So think about this. You got somebody on the phone and they agreed to meet with you and you wrote their name into your calendar. So just for writing somebody's name in my calendar, just for getting someone to say this, okay, Tuesday at four o'clock works. Okay, Tuesday, 4 p.m., that works good for you. All right, make sure you let your husband and know. Okay, great. Just for, they don't have to meet with you. They don't want to buy anything. All you're getting someone to say is yes, between seven and eight works good on Friday. Just getting a name on a sheet of paper. Every time you do that, what do you get paid? 60 bucks. $60. $60 every time you set an appointment. So now I'm more motivated to what? I'm more motivated to set appointments, get that schedule filled up. Now I know this. I want to hit the phones and I want to talk to people. Because every time I talk to somebody, that means someone goes like this. Hello. <laughs> if, I, if I could get someone to go, hello, every time I talk to somebody, what do, how much do I make? Uh, $30. $30. $30. Did Casey go over this with you guys? No. Okay. All right. $30. That's pretty cool. So mentally, you're like, I just got to get some people to answer the phone today. And then, obviously, calls. You know, I'm making how much dollars per call? About two bucks a call. Making about two bucks a call. So, you know what I should do? I, you know what I can control? I can't even, I can't control who answers, who sets, who I see, who I sell, or really how much I sell them for. You know, we can kind of narrow that down and really get get pretty good at controlling that to an extent but i really can't one thing i can control though is what how many phone calls how many phone calls i can make that's pretty much the only like thing i can control because the rest of it's out of my control right um so so does this make sense guys right so now I know that for myself, if I want to make sure that I'm getting at least three sales a week, then I need to make sure that I'm making at least 600 phone calls a week. Well, now I got to figure out how am I going to do that? Well, there's what, 168 hours in a week. Here's the hours that I'm going to be working. Here's the hours when I'm not going to be working. Here's the hours when I should make phone calls. And I got to spread them out and I got to be smart about this, right? So if you know you have to do 600 phone calls, when should you make those calls, guys? When should you make them? Should we make them all on Sunday, all on Monday, all on Tuesday? Should we call them at night? Should we call them in the morning? Should we call them in the afternoon? All of the above. Pretty much. Pretty much, you know, so there's a rhyme and reason and a strategy behind everything. You know, you you don't just want to just randomly just go out there and just work out and just just go to the gym and just lift all the weights. Like there got to be a rhyme and reason when you go to the gym, what you're going to do on this day, how, you know, there's timing and all that stuff. So, you know, um, the same thing with the phone call, same thing with the business. We'll, we'll, we'll go over just like, how can I get the, the, the phone calls and basic normal hours, okay? Well, number one is um, how many phone calls per hour can I make? Can you make 30 phone calls an hour? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. We make 30 phone calls an hour all day long. So, and I need to make 600. So that means I need to call for 
20 hours. Where am I going to hit these 20 hours this week? Well, we know Monday from four till nine and Thursday from four till nine, there's five hours built in there, five hours built in there. Cool thing, I need 20, just got 10 of them done. Right? Now, that's my evening calls, evening. There are people in that lead pack, in my leads, there's referrals that I got. There's people that they're not home Monday nights. They're not home Thursday nights. If that's the only time you ever make phone calls, you're never going to talk to them. So we just have to understand that up, up front, you know, and then gosh, be proactive and strategize around, okay, when can I hit those morning risers? When can I hit the morning crowd, right? What would be good days to do that? So what we build into the schedule is we built in Tuesday morning, okay, from 8 until 10, and Friday morning from 8 until 10. Well, why? Mentally, Thursday night, guess where your mind was Thursday night from 4 to 9? Was it, was it, was it on focus on writing business or setting appointments? Setting You're in the phone zone, I call it. Your brain was in the phone zone, you know? And, and, and um, your chances are that when you finish call night here, you're going to have to go in the field Friday and see some clients. Saturday, you're going to need to see some clients, right? Well, um, chances are there's going to be some gaps in your schedule on Friday. There's going to be some gaps in your schedule on Saturday. And that's what we do Friday morning is we get more appointments after call night. And we call this right here, we call this the YAC. Y-A-C-C, -C, your appointments after call night. In football, a running back, when they're running the ball, um, some, some running backs in football, they'll run the, the football, and then somebody will hit them, and they'll fall right down, right? As soon as they get some contact, they fall over. Anybody familiar with that? And then some running backs, they'll get hit, and then they'll keep on going, Okay. What they call that is they call it yards after contact. Some running backs, they get hit, and they keep on running. They have a lot of yards after contact. Some running backs get hit, they fall over. They don't have a lot of yards after contact. So um, some people make phone calls on Thursday night, and then they don't make any phone calls Friday or Saturday. They don't add any more appointments after call night, you know? So, so these are your appointments after call night. And um, uh, Friday morning, Thursday morning, great opportunities to make AM calls. Uh, Saturday mornings, if you're not sitting, we're setting. It's a great time to set appointments Saturday morning. Some teams actually don't even sit, they set. Some teams, Saturday mornings, they don't set any appointments. They just set because it's prime time setting. It's one of the best times of the week to set Saturday mornings. So that takes care of the mornings. What's also open for a lot of people is sometimes on Monday, you know, on Monday, we have an agency meeting at 11 a.m. So literally, people are they're like, what am I going to do? It's at 8 o'clock until 11 o'clock in the morning. There's like pretty much nothing for me to do. So I'll come up here and, you know, I like to play music before the agency meeting. I want to play, they're in there setting appointments. So I'm like having to wait for them to get off the phones. So people come up and they book appointments Monday morning and Thursday mornings just to get some of their, or, or some of their, their schedule filled up. So if you're bored, you don't got nothing to do, it's a great time to get some early morning appointments as well. So plenty of times to do that kind of stuff. There's plenty of times to get the morning scheduling. Um, but scheduling hours wise, this is another two hours here, you know, and there's another two hours here that's scheduled in. So now we're at 14 hours, right? Um, then we have Wednesday. What time did we, um, what time did we not hit yet? We didn't hit the afternoon, the lunchtime, okay? 
So, you know, lunchtime, I think you should hit a lunchtime phone session at least twice a week. Definitely on Wednesdays is a good one. So calling from like 11 to 1 or 11 to 2 on a Wednesday before your appointments is a great time to catch up, catch appointments. So we'll add another two hours there, puts us at 16. And we know now we have to make up. There's still four more hours we got to call, okay? Well, every day that you're in the field, every day that you're in the field, like when you're in the field, you're going to have time in between your appointments, between Tuesday and Wednesday, between Tuesday and Wednesday, you're going to have time in between your appointments. So you want to put, you know, at least an hour of calls in each, each field day. Friday, you're going to have appointments, but you're going to be able to at least put an hour of calls in. You know, Saturday, you have appointments, but you at least be able to put an hour of calls in. So you make an hour of calls in between your appointments because look, you're not driving to your appointments anymore, okay? So, so before we were driving, it was harder to do this, but we still do this when we're driving. Now we don't have to drive. So if you have appointments um, on your schedule and your schedule is set up from, let's just say three o'clock until you know, your last appointment's like nine o'clock at night, right? How many presentations are we given? We're gonna give, let's just say on average, you know, we're gonna give three presentations over those six hours. How long were those presentations? Well, let's say you sold two of them and you didn't sell one of them, right? So you, you, you basically were looking at like four and a half to five hours given presentations. So you're still gonna have at least an hour freed up. You always have at least an hour freed up throughout your day to add some more appointments and make some phone calls. So the point is adding an hour every time you're going into the field, making an hour of phone calls during that. And then also, like I said, we have Saturday morning, we have Thursday morning, we have Monday morning, where you can get those extra calls in as well. Some people come in on Monday afternoon, Nothing going on there. Thursday afternoon, nothing going on there. And we have 12, we have 13 hours a day when you're allowed to make calls. You can make calls from eight o'clock in the morning until nine o'clock at night. You have 13 hours a day where you could be making money. So try not to do things during those 13 hours that's not making you money. So like if I had to type up a report, that would happen before 8 a.m. or after 9 p.m. You know, because I could it, I could be talking to somebody, I could be setting on a client. I could be meeting with the client. I could be drumming up new business. So, you know, if you if a client was like, oh, you know, um, send me a letter, or you know, you have to do a thank you card for somebody, like I would try to do stuff that don't make me money, that I can't be talking to people or, or recruiting somebody or training somebody or hiring somebody or selling an appointment, setting an appointment, running a Zoom call. Like I have people time is money time. We're in a people business. This is a contact sport. So the more that you're in contact with people, the more that you're going to be generating money and some fast in some way, shape or form, you know, as long as you're busy and you're talking to people, that's the money, you know, stuff that's not making you money needs to be put to times when you can't be meeting with people. Like if I start, I can't call you at 930 at night anymore. So, and if I can't meet with you at 930 at night, I can't call you at 930 at night, then I'll go do something else that, that I need to get done that I probably sh should be doing, you know, not during, during people time. You know, so try and fill my schedule up. And then, you know, lunch, you know, if, if I'm eating lunch, I'm either eating lunch and working while I'm eating lunch or I'm meeting with somebody and eating lunch at the same time, trying to, to kill two birds with one stone. I would always say, you know, I'm on a phone with somebody. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm slammed this week. How's your schedule? Like, I'm slammed too. I'm like, well, you want to know one thing I got to do? I got to eat. One thing you got to do, you got to eat, right? So if you got to eat, I got to eat. You got to meet. I got to meet. Why don't we meet? and eat at the same time, and we'll get two girls killed at one stern. How's next Friday? I'll meet you over at the, uh, you know, Walnut Grill or whatever. And that's, that's how I would, I mean, you, you gotta be so busy that that you have to meet and eat just to get just to get some business done, you know, or else it's gonna be pushed off till who knows when, you know? Quick question. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to fill out all the times that 
I, I should use to call, but yes, kind of going all over the week there and all over the times. Could you go through the days of the week so I can write down what times I should be making phone calls? Yeah, yeah. So um, Monday from four to nine, Tuesday from eight till ten, Wednesday from eleven till two, eleven to one. You could even put Thursday from four to nine, Friday from eight till ten. You know, those ones are like pretty solid ones. Now what you're gonna have to mix in though, is, um, you know, mixing in on a Monday, either in the morning or in the afternoon, sprinkling an hour or two of phone calls in. So like eight to nine on Monday? Uh, you got eight to 11 on Monday wide open. Okay. Um, there's nothing, we just have an agency meeting at 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then after the agency meeting, there's pretty much nothing after that until phones. So, you know, Monday's like pretty wide open for the most part. Usually your MGA um, will have a kickoff meeting for the team. So, you know, after the agency meeting, you'll usually have a, a huddle with your MGA at some point on Monday afternoon. So other than that, Mondays are pretty wide open, you know, uh, Tuesday mornings from eight until 10. And uh, at 10 o'clock, we do a sales call where people hop on and they, they learn sales. So we do sales trading on Tuesday at 10. So you can make calls, hop on there. And then really that runs till maybe 11 and then you're free 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock. You can make more phone calls. You can get ready for your appointments, grab some lunch, you know, uh, make some phone calls in the afternoon on Tuesday. Uh, definitely when you're in the field and then, and then same thing, you know, Wednesday morning, there's nothing going on at all. Wednesday morning, nothing at all. Okay, so I, I could call from, from 8 to 11? You call, yeah, 8 to whenever on Wednesday. Um, but I, I, but if you call from 8 to 11, I just want to make sure at one day you, you designate a lunchtime call session. Catch the lunchtime people. There's a lunchtime crowd you can catch. And then Thursday has 4 to 9. Uh, what about in the mornings on Thursday? Thursday is completely wide open. So, so 8 to so I could call from eight to nine on Thursday. Yeah, you could probably call from eight until three. Eight till three? Well, I mean, you're wide open. There's nothing going on. The only the reason I say three is because that's probably when your MGA is going to have a halftime meeting. Okay. So usually Thursdays and Monday afternoon, right before we hop on the phones, there's usually a quick huddle. A phone huddle, halftime meeting, kickoff for the week, MGA team huddle, team meeting type of thing. Mm -hmm. You know? So every Monday and every Thursday, you'll you'll still hop in your MGA team huddle, you know, and huddle up with them. Um, but really, other than that, on Thursday, there's just some phones going on at night, little huddle, and boom, it's wide open, man, you know. So, uh, and then Friday morning is where you can, basically, Tuesday morning and Friday morning is like the same thing. Okay. And the idea is we want to stack Thursday night, big schedule for Friday, Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then Friday morning, we want to add on to that. And then at 10 a.m., guess what? We get all kind of knowledge. We get all the juice. We get all the fire. We get equipped so that we can go out on Friday and Saturday and see these appointments and have some good knowledge and juice and fire to give to them. Does that make sense? Right? So Tuesday morning, same thing. Monday, what happened Monday night? We stacked up and built our nice schedule up Monday night. Tuesday morning, we wake up and we go add more onto that schedule, fill in those gaps for the next two days. And before we go see any of these people Tuesday, before we go see all these people on Wednesday, let's fill up our cup. And at 10 a.m., we hop on that sales coffee, you know, and, and, and we learn and get any questions that you have before you're about to go take on your day, before you're about to go see your, your people, you know, making sure that you're, you're, you're a well-oiled machine, you know, and, and you have some good, good firepower and some good tools in your tool belt and you're equipped to go out there and get the job done. Does that make sense right there? Does that, 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 that philosophy, that's the philosophy, right? That's why we do, this is, believe me, there's a rhyme and reason behind a lot of stuff, you know, and it's even deeper than that. I could probably go for the next half hour on why we do that little whole 
thing right there. And it's, 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 it's deeper than that. So anyways, numbers wise, we figured it out, right? Those are 20 hours. That's average. Now all this, see all that free time? That's what like the superstars don't sleep with that time. They, they, they don't lose it, they use it. I mean, you go, there's a lot of free time in there. We didn't talk about Saturday or Sundays, right? If you're going at it and I'm going at it and you're giving it everything, I'm getting everything. The only chance I'm going to even have is if I work a Sunday and you're working a Sunday too. So like, it's not, it's not even a chance I have. I, I, I don't have an option. To know. If I want to beat you and you're working Sundays and I'm working Sundays, then guess what I have to do? I have to not only work Sundays, but I have to work my Sundays better than your Sundays. You know, and that's how it got to for me, where I had to really heighten and take my game to the next level. You know, and it was a it was a a force. It was like it forced me to do it because they say you know that necessity is the mother of all invention. So like out of necessity, there was no more time in a week for me. My days were full, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. So I had to invent ways to create more time and get more time on my schedule and start, I was forced to develop people and hire people and find ways to just get my, into my time in the better time slots and stuff. So um, that's cool when you get to that point, you know? And the sooner you start filling up your schedule, the faster you're gonna be forced to start getting smarter with your time. First thing is working hard, working hard. But when you work hard, 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 eventually there's no more working hard like you've worked hard as enough so what do you do at that point you have to if you if you want to grow if you want to get better you have to start working smarter so, so sometimes people work smarter not because they're smarter because they're really hard workers and they work so darn hard that they were forced to work smarter because they couldn't work any hard that's why, and, and, and necessity, and they, they invented and be like, wow, how'd you do that? And like, I was forced to. I never would have figured it out if I didn't put myself in a position where I had to figure it out, right? So test yourself and see if you can put yourself in a position where you're working so hard that you have to get smarter. And how do you get smarter? Well, sometimes you may create it yourself, or sometimes you may be like, you know what? I'm burning the candle at both ends. I'm maxed out to the limit here, maxed out to the limit. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ask somebody who was already in this position and get their wisdom so that I can just skip like five years. You know how to hop in a time machine real quick? Get one-on-one -on -one time with someone with a lot of wisdom. That'll literally transport you. That's why if you do one-on-one -on -one training versus team training, who do you think gets better? Right? Who do you think is going to get, you're going to get a lot better, a lot faster, but it costs a lot more money. Like for me, jujitsu class was $120 a month. I got to go once or twice a week. I could go to class for $120 a month, right? Now I got eight sessions for $120 a month. Or you can get one session with the owner of the gym, black belt, one-on-one -on -one for an hour, 100 bucks an hour. So two, two times a week I went, it was $200 a week cost me $800 a month, I was making $800 a month for one-on-one -on -one training, right? For the same thing that I could have got for $100 a month, but I could have went to a class. What's the difference? You know how much better that I got in the one-on-one -on -one training with him versus sitting there in a class with everybody and going over like the attentions that you get and all that? So that's what I'm saying like is, is, is that. Now, going back over to this, okay, uh, any questions on this time? There's the 20 hours, but you can't limit yourself to that. You can make 30 or 40. Hey, whatever you can squeeze in and, and shake out, you can get more in there as well. What if you I make... I'm 31 right now just with, the, with what I got. There you go, right? So now if you... Um, he counted he count 31, he said, you know. So now if you think, what if you um, hired somebody to make phone calls? Some of our top producers, they hire somebody to call with them. So now if you put 20 in, they put 20 in, you just made 40 hours of phone calls for a week. 
and you can make it a win-win situation. So there's all kinds of opportunity, <laughs> all kinds. So the next side of the coin would be presenting, right? If we need to give now 10 presentations, how many hours should that take? So if it was a non-sale, about an hour. If it was a sale, about an hour and a half, okay? But let's use a little bit higher numbers. So how many presentations did we give, guys? 10. So we, we spent 20 hours calling. Now we've got to spend how many time presenting? 10 presentations, seven no's, three yeses. Keep in mind, I probably went over this with you guys, but remember, seven what? No, three, yes. Okay. We're getting told no more than double. So you got to be okay. We're getting told no more than double. At the end of the day, you might get told no all day. You might blank for our first two days of the week. It's a numbers game. You have to hang in there. Keep doing the presentation the way you're supposed to do the presentation. Assume the sale at the end. And uh, three out of ten will enroll. All right. How long were these no's? Let's say an hour. And then how long were the yeses? Let's just say two hours. So that's six hours plus seven hours equals what? 13 hours of presenting. Let's just call it 15. Okay. Now, one thing that I would have to add to this would be drive time. And now we don't have to add that anymore. There's no more drive time. So, so that's about 15 on air. That's like 35 hours for the week. You know, and then let's just say that we take some time to, uh, you know, meet with the team, meet with my manager, do some studying. So, yeah, it's a solid 40 hours you want to put in on, on, on a week. And, uh, and if you want to take it above and beyond, that's where you go. And that's, that's where, that's where it all gets settled, you know, on, on the score sheet <laughs> at the end of the month is, you know, all that stuff. So does this make sense? Okay. So time-wise, we're good. Now up front, you might have to work a little bit harder. You might, it might take you 50 hours to get these results until you get pretty good. And when you're about average, you know, then it's taking you about 40 hours. When you get above average, now you're getting this stuff done in 36 hours. You're like a nurse. You're getting it done in 32 hours. And it's not going to take you as many phone calls to talk to as many people, to set as many appointments, and to see as many appointments, and to sell as many, and, and the ALP per sale will be higher. Uh, one thing and the only way that you're going to be able to crack that code, though, is through referrals, through referrals. So, you know, how many referrals do you need to collect per week? Is it 10? No. It was more than that. How many referrals do you need to collect per week? Not 10, not 10, okay? I will tell you it is 60, 60 based upon this, okay? Uh, 30 can keep you in the game. But when you collect a referral, how many of them do you set? 60, 70%, 90%? You will set one out of three, so you'll set 20. One out of three, 30 percent or so. Okay. So now we know these numbers. Okay. Well, I know that if I set twenty, how many will I see? Ten. So we'll we'll call this R E F C O L referrals collected. R E F what? S E T referral set. And this is R E F what? S E E N scene. That's the simplest equation. I hope your numbers are better. I hope that 
when you collect referrals, you're setting two out of three, right? But when you go to look back at the collect and the set, you're gonna find out a lot of times if somebody collects about 10 referrals, they set about three of them, okay? And now when you think about it, that's set, and if you set three, how many are you gonna see? Like one or two. So you're saying that if I collect 10 referrals, I'm probably only gonna actually set three and maybe see one or two. So I'm gonna collect 10 and see one, collect 10 and see one, collect 10 and maybe see two. That's kind of what we're looking at right now, okay? So how many do you need to collect? I need to collect 60 so that I can set 20. And if I set 20, I'll see 10, okay? Well, if I see 10 referrals a week, right? And then I'm able to also see 10 what? Leads per week. I'm going to what? Give 20 presentations a week. If I'm giving 20 presentations a week, I'm going to be making six to seven sales a week times 800 would be 4,800 to 5,600 ALP. And I'm making about 2,400 to $2,800 for the week. So 20, 20 calls, six, seven sales, 800 AOP, and then with it- 20 presentations. 20 presentations, six, seven sales, 800 AOP average. And that comes out to uh, 9,800 to 56. Uh, 4,800. Oh, 4,800? Yeah. Okay, that's what six six sales at eight hundred a pop would be forty eight hundred. Seven sales at eight hundred would be fifty six hundred. So you're making six to seven sales. So you're making forty eight to fifty six hundred ALP, which is basically twenty four to twenty eight hundred dollars in income for the week. So that's collecting sixty. That's what happens when you collect 60 referrals, but check this out. Now, if you're doing 20 presentations a week in order to collect 60 referrals, how many referrals per presentation do you want to collect? Three. Only three, okay? So it's, it's a lot easier. Now you can collect uh, quality referrals. You can collect way more than that, obviously. So, so um, when you meet a referral, it's a lot easier to get a referral from a referral because that's how that you got in front. How'd you get in front of that person? Sure. Somebody referred you to them. So guess what they think that this program is like? Guess what they think you you know that this oh this the way that it works must work, you know? So now I gotta I gotta keep I gotta so it's a lot easier to ask them and for them to you know play ball and, and to, to refer people is because that's how they know the program to even exist. So referrals from referrals are huge. Now, your minimum though, you should collect 60 referrals a week. That's, we gotta be doing 100. Some people could do more than that, but never do we wanna be below, uh, be below 30. That'll give us 15 set, and that'll still put us maybe in front of, uh, I'm sorry, not 15. That'll give us 10 set and five scene. Okay, and that'll keep us in the game. 10, set, five, scene. And now at that point, if you see five referrals and you see five leads, you're still gonna give your 10 presentations a week. You can see five referrals and 10 leads and get 15 presentations a week. But as long as you're collecting 30, you'll set 10 and you'll see five you'll see five referrals a week. That'll keep you in the game and it'll make sure you're getting in front of people. Here's another thing is with your leads, you're not gonna give 10 presentations every single week off of the leads. Your first week when you get your leads, you, you might give 10, but if you don't collect any referral, your second week, you might only give eight. Your third week, if you don't collect any referrals, you might give, give six. 
And then your last week, if you're going to park in your girls, you might only see four people per month per week. And when you add that up, that's 10, that's 20, that's 28 people for the month, divided by four, you only saw seven a week. If you see seven a week, you know, that's maybe getting two sales. And if you're new, that's rolling the dice. So in order to ensure it, you got to make sure that you're collecting referrals in order to fill in these gaps. So those are the numbers on the referrals. One out of three. Did they go over the referral tree? No. The referral tree goes like this. If, if I meet somebody today, you guys got any appointments set? Today, you probably have an appointment set with somebody. You and your manager are gonna go see somebody. And when you see that person, you know that they know a lot of people, right? So that person is gonna give you five people. One, two, three, four, five names. And then you go meet with those five people and those five people give you one, two, three, four, five. Imagine that. And then you go meet with those five people and they give you five people. Right? And before you know it, you can meet with them five people. And you got all this activity, all these clients all over everywhere, all because you met with who? One person. So you always have to be thinking like that. Every person that you meet with is literally a gateway of opportunity for you that before this, it was not. Before, this, before you worked here, did, did, did you have an opportunity where everybody could be an opportunity? Didn't exist, right? So your brain wasn't trained to think like that. But if you start to think like that, if they do business, if you do business with them, guess what? They should do business with you or you take your business elsewhere. So you got, there's a guy down the street who, um, you know, will uh, get you new tires. He has a tire shop, right? Say, all right, man, well, I'll, I'll get my tires. Yeah, it's great. You know, I actually do life insurance. I'd love to be able to sit down with you guys and, you know, go over some different life insurance options with you, right? You know, and he's like, oh, well, like, well, you know, I love doing business with you, man. And I love to be able to have an opportunity. You're in my business. I love the opportunity to earn your business as well. Oh, well, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't want to meet with you. And I don't want to, I don't want, okay, all right. Well, I mean, there's no reason why I need to come here. <laughs> to be honest with you, there's a place right down the street. And uh, they do the same thing, you know. And I'll go ask him if he wants to let me do some uh, life insurance with him. You know, so if, if you're down, I'd love to work with you. If not, I'm going to go see if he wants to. And if he don't want to play ball, guarantee somebody wants my business. You see that? That's how you got to be. That's what my dad told me. He's like, if, if they do, if you do business with them, they do business with you. You know, you ask them for it. Right. So I've done that before. I had a guy who wanted to watch my car. I said, all right, well, um, I need to sell a life insurance policy. So do you have life insurance? He said, no. I said, all right, well, if you passed away, then who's gonna be responsible for your, your funeral and stuff? I don't know, it's like, probably your mom, right? He's like, yeah. I'm like, so you're gonna make your mom pay for that? He was like, I don't know, like that seems kind of irresponsible, don't you think? And I was like, come to think of it, you know, you need to get a life insurance policy because, you know, if you're going to be driving around my Maserati, you know, I, uh, I need to make sure that, you know, whoever's driving that car is responsible, right? And I just don't think it's responsible to not carry life insurance on yourself. So um, what I'll do is I'll have my, one of my managers, because I, 
I don't even sell life insurance at that point. And I was already one of the top managers in the company. So I was like, I'll have one of my managers, Nate. You know Nate, right? He's like, yeah. I'm like, I'll have Nate give you a call. You sign up for a policy with Nate, okay? Then you give me a call, and then you can come pick up the Maserati and come. Right? So, so I mean, I had I had to play play ball with him like that, right? But I'm did like, he was. Did you buy a policy? Yeah, of course he played bought, bought a policy. He didn't drive my Maserati, and he didn't get the keys to that thing, and go and get to clean it until he got it. You know, and he got it like literally that day because he wanted to clean my car that day. So he wanted money. <laughs> so, anyways, that's just one one small example, you know. Um. So uh, referrals, man. How about this? You guys, you guys with me on the referral stuff? So you might think like, oh, it takes time. Though I got to talk to them. I got to write their names down. You know, you know, it takes time. Sitting here and calling the same leads over and over again. That takes time as well. You know. So the time that you spend collecting the referrals is never going to be time that's wasted. That's probably one of the best things you could do with your time. There's nothing better really you can do with your time. To be honest with you, I'd say referrals or getting a sale. I'd say get the referrals. Cause it's like, do you want to fish for a day? Do you want to you know, be able to learn how to fish for a lifetime? You know, getting a sale is like getting fish for a day, but getting referrals, that means, hey, you got some business for tomorrow. It's keeping your business in the game. Uh, on the subject of phone calls and booking appointments, what's, what's the general limit to, to how far in advance like you can book appointments? Because I'm just thinking if I'm going to be spending as much time as I can making phone calls or if I don't have any referrals, it's like, I, I feel like if it's like, yeah, I'd love to sell you a life insurance policy, but I'm booked up until a month from now. Can you can you meet middle of the month on, at this time? I feel like the show rate for a meeting like that would be very low. It's like, what's the general? Well, oh, yeah, of? yeah. I mean, time kills deals. The older, the colder. You know, so don't forget those two things. Time kills deals. The older, the colder. Strike while the iron's hot. Um, you know, if you could book them same day, see them same day, that's the highest closing ratio in the company. Yep. So you call him Wednesday and you catch him at lunchtime and he's like, I'll be home around six. You're like, you know what? I can squeeze you guys in between seven and eight. Is that work for your wife? And you see him and then you see him that day. Closing ratio is the highest on this. Show ratio is highest on this. So show ratio, if you set them that day, chances are they're going to show up that day. Right? If you set them for tomorrow, show ratio goes down a little bit. Set them on Wednesday more. And the further out that you set them, the lower the show ratio goes. So, you, so generally shouldn't book appointments any further than whatever the coming weekend is. That's what, that's what I feel. So like. what I would do is I would have five days up in front of me at all times. So Monday, I, well, I had papers, I had paper um, schedules, you know, and I, I actually kept hung them up on, I would sit in a cubicle or wherever I was at on my, sometimes I'd be in my car. The office was full. The office was full. So we went into the parking lot and we would make phone calls in the parking lot. So I remember on my dashboard, I would have like, uh, if, if it was Monday, I would have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, and then I'd have Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday. We're like all up on the board and I'd catch them on the phone. Okay, Joe, great. Um, you know what? I'm pretty slammed, but I can squeeze you in tomorrow between five and six or on Wednesday between seven and eight. What time works best for you? Okay, all right. So you're not gonna get home till, till Friday? Okay, well, you want to know what, Joe? They do have me out there this weekend. Um, everybody actually fills up the weekend. They take all my, uh, my slots. But before we even get into it, I do have a time between 10 and 11, or I could squeeze you even on Sunday. If you guys are available on Sunday, there's a few clients I promise I'd see in the afternoon. How's one to three work? Saturday's good? Okay, great. I'll squeeze you in on Saturday. Go ahead and grab a pen and paper. I'll look forward to seeing your wife then. Right here's my information. Blah 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 blah. Um, but the whole point of that is is that I would have five days in front of me. So so if it was Tuesday or um, Thursday, then I would have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then I have Tuesday, Wednesday of the following week would be in front of me. You know, so I always had those up in front of me. But I always did have next weeks like 
still there. Um, and like, if it was something like, ah, I'm not, I'm, I'm actually, we're just leaving for vacation, you know, and I'm not going to be back literally for a week. So, okay, well, I do have, you know, my next week's time slots up. I can set you down so, so, so for some competitive. I'll definitely have to call and, you know, make sure I catch you on Monday and confirm this with you. But here's what we can do. I'll, I'll get you in now, Tuesday, between five and six. That way, you don't, we don't miss you. You don't miss the slot. And I'll make sure we, you know, I'll, I'll at least give you a call and remind you, you know, on Monday of, of that. So, you know, hey, I don't want to book it, but he's on vacation. And here's the thing. If you get him on the phone, book the appointment, okay? Book it. You never go, oh, well, I'll call you back. <sighs> Come on, no, that's not the right way, man. Remember, um, always book the appointment on the first phone call. So even if it's booked out two weeks from now, that is way better than not booking the appointment. So you got them on the call, and they can't meet you for this, then try next today. Can't meet you the next day, try the next day. Can't meet you the next day, try next week. Can't meet you next week, try the following week. Book them. Because if they get off the call with you and then there's nothing booked, next time you talk to them, guess what you're going to have to do? Book an appointment. And who knows if you're ever going to talk to them again. So what I'd rather do is book an appointment with them, even if it's two or three weeks out or a month out, right? And that way, the next time I talk to them, guess what we're going to do? We're going to talk about an appointment that was already booked versus having to book an appointment, right? It, and it, it's, I'll move, it, we'll be moving it. I'd rather reschedule an already scheduled appointment than schedule an appointment. You know what I mean? The first time schedule it. So the next time you're not scheduling it, you're talking about an already scheduled appointment, whether it's confirming it or, or moving it or whatever it may be. Does that make sense? T time kills deals. And then remember this, um, the client's interest declines in proportion to how many times we call them and contact and talk to them. So every time we talk to them and we don't book them, their interest declines and declines and declines. So that's why when we, we catch them, we got to book them and get them on that schedule. It's a good question. Hopefully that makes sense. That's key, key phone tips right there, huge phone tips. Always set the appointment on the first phone call because the client's interest declines in proportion to how many times we talk to them. So, Good phone tips, good phone training here, guys. This is some vital stuff. Hopefully these numbers are making sense to you. You know, I want you to see there's logical rhyme and reason behind this stuff, okay? You know, there really is. Does this make sense to you? I mean, isn't it pretty cool how it actually makes sense? <laughs> you know? That's why I like the business. It's very fundamental. It's all math. Life insurance is all factual numbers. It's factual. It's numbers, black and white, logical statistics. So, well, um, if there's no questions on any of that, uh, we can pretty much break, you know, uh, for a Friday. We've definitely covered a lot, reviewed, you know, the, the majority of the stuff that I really wanted to drive home with you. The other stuff, you know, that you guys went over for the week was um, uh, you went over the beginning of a presentation. So how to give a presentation at the beginning, how to uh, build rapport with the, with the clients and all that. And then we went over no cost benefits, which was yesterday actually, right? So you guys should have went over the no cost benefits and got a good lesson on that and broken that down in a little bit more detail as well. And uh, you know, now guys, it's time to put the stuff to action. Just go out there and do it. You know, it's nerve wracking the first few times. I promise you, I was so nervous. I like, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I, I, I tried on the way there because we had to drive. So the whole, it's like, you got 45 minutes to think about this. <laughs> and it's your first presentation. And your manager's like, all right, you ready to go? And I'm like, yeah. And meanwhile, I'm thinking, like, what excuse can you come up with right now 
to not give the presentation and have him do it just one more time, right? And I was literally thinking of everything, like, tell him your stomach hurts. <laughs> like I was so nervous, but I went in and I did it. And it's funny how, you know, they don't really know, the client don't know. They don't know that you're nervous. They don't know nothing. They don't know there's a script. They don't know nothing, you know? Um, so, you know, I, 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 after a while, you just get those calluses and you do it and it's not nerve wracking anymore and you don't even care. So um, there's nothing to it, but, but to do it, just go out there and, and the best exercise is like, like Nike, just do it, just go do it, just do it, just get it over with, you know, and then, and then, and then get those nerves out and, and before you find out, they don't bite. The water is warm, the water is nice, jump on it. It's not that bad, you know, no one's gonna hurt you. <laughs> you're, you're gonna be okay, you know, we'll be all right. Your manager's there. So start jumping into these presentations, guys, and taking the ball and taking control and telling your manager, hey, get out of the way. I got this. All right. So have a good weekend this weekend, guys. And uh, we'll see you on Monday. We're going to have a killer agency meeting. We're going to have our top people speak for the month. Invite your friends, family uh, to the agency meeting. If you have some personal recruits, that's a great thing. Hey, man, uh, Monday, just hop on here from your couch, from your house, from your car from your office, lunch break, mom, hop on here, dad, aunt, uncle, cousin, friend, brother, guy that I went to college with, send them a link to the agency meeting, have them hop on and they can see what you do, right? And, and it'd be cool to have them, them support you because they were like, you know what? I think I know somebody who would be good. I'm gonna send you their number. Like that has happened multiple times. Like I'm not trying to recruit this guy. He's one of my buddies. He's my college, one of my college football players. He's like a computer science guy. But um, I said, hop in my meeting just to check it out, bro, just see what we do a little bit. He's like, hey, after watching that meeting, Tommy, I actually think, you know, one of my buddies might even be good at this. Like, cool, send him over, you know, great for him. You know, I had people say, you do life insurance? Like, yeah, I'll, I, I have a bunch of people I could probably get you to send life. I need some myself, as a matter of fact. And you drum up clients and you're not even really trying to. You're just trying to say, hey, check this out. So set, setting people up and getting them into that agency meeting is probably the easiest thing you could possibly do these days. Back in the day, they'd have to get in a car and drive to the office to be here. Now, all over the country. Your cousin lives in Alabama, great. Send them, a, send them a link, they can watch it from Alabama, Florida, California, all over the country. So um, think about that. You know, I'm sure they probably went over, you know, your starting 10 list you know, for you guys to get your $750 going and getting it going now, you know, um, shout out. We got Ryan Wilson right now. He actually had uh, right now uh, over 60 people that he's identified that he wants to bring in. And we're calling all of them. And we got a couple of them on, a couple of them already hired, a couple of them are in a group this week. And we just, we're calling them all, getting set up for next week, you know, but he's not playing no games, you know, and, uh, and more power to him, man, because he, he can break my record by doing something like that. But remember, man, you get $750 a person. So, you know, if you can get 10, that's 7,500. You know, in order to get 10, I'd say you probably should aim for 30 or 40 and you'll at least get 10, right? And that's not a bad way to start your career without even doing any work yet. So, so we can start recruiting now. Well, I would definitely, well, you have 90 days from when you, your first piece of business gets started. So I try and coach people up before their 90 days to give them more days, <laughs> you know, like, so, you know, technically your first piece of business that you write might be March 1st. If I can catch you on February 1st and train you up on this, then you're essentially going to get a 30 day jump start before your 90 days even kicks in. So you're like almost 120 days to take advantage of it. I just hate catching people when it's too late or they didn't really recognize or realize the opportunity. And it's like a month or two already into the opportunity. And they're like, crap, man, I wish I would have like got on this earlier, jumped on this sooner um, because 750 for 90. And then, you know, still, I don't want to discourage anybody from like, you know, it's not, it's not over after that. After 90 days, you still get a bonus. It's $250 though versus 750. So that's why I say in your first 90 days, you can get 750. And then for the rest of your career, five years from now, 10 years from now, if you're at the grocery store and you meet somebody and they want to come into the opportunity, 
uh, you'll get $250 per person on top, you know, forever. But for your first 90, it's 750. Yeah, so I definitely would recommend to, you know, get on, take advantage of that now. And, and you know, we say, you know, you want to start with your starting 10. Uh, basically, like if you were to pick like a team, you're the captain, you want to pick your starting 10 people that you'd want to start and get in the business with. And uh, the main thing you want to do is, is just get them to sit in through the company overview. And that's where, you know, I spend time going over the career and breaking, you know, the, the career positions down the company. And then they fill out a questionnaire at the end. And then we bring them in for a final interview after that. So uh, the, um, uh, the easiest way is just to have them sit through the company overview and they'll learn right about the company. It's pretty, pretty simple way to do that or get them you know, in touch with your manager and they'll book them for that situation. Uh, but you know, obviously 10 would be a start, they call it your starting 10. That means you're just getting started. So you definitely don't wanna, it's not your stopping 10. You don't stop at 10, you keep going. You, know? you just get started with those 10. And um, uh, you can write down five center of influences. These are people that you know, that know a lot of people and you just approach them and, and you say, hey, I'm starting with a new company. You know, one of my first things is I'm actually working on getting into management. And as a manager, they actually need me to find two or three other managers to help us run our territory. We're at a big point of growth right now. So I wanted to reach out to you, Uncle Bob. I wanted to reach out to you, you know, um, Mr. Uh, President of the fraternity or uh, my football coach, you know, or um, pastor of the church. I wanted to reach out to your pastor, Bob because I know you know a lot of people and I was hoping maybe that uh, you might know maybe a couple individuals that I can get in touch with that might be a good for this opportunity. We're looking for someone that is, you know, energetic. They love working with people that they, they love that, that, that uh, you know, they're professional. Uh, they, they, um, they would be able to even wouldn't mind working from home. There's an opportunity where you work virtually working from home um, and, uh, and they want to make a lot of income, you know, uh, professional income for these people, hundred, hundred thousand dollars and more, you know, in these positions. So, you know, uh, Coach Smith, I just wanted to reach out to you because you know a lot of people. Who do you know that you know might might be interested, or I might be able to reach out to and extend that opportunity to them, right? And I say we have a lot of people that are sending resumes and people that are looking. You know, they're they're responding. We're you know one of the top hiring companies. Blah blah blah. But the best way is through word of mouth. So that's why I wanted to reach out to you and a couple of people that I knew before we start, you know, interviewing these random people that send their resumes in, right? And that's what I'll be telling them. And then they'll ask you questions like, oh, what's it all about? What do we do? Is it, how's it pay? Is it hourly? You know, is we, do we have to come to an office? Is it sales? What's it, what's it all about? All you do is you say, you want to know what, Joe? Um, I, uh, that, what did I say? Um, uh, I am not trained. So, so if they ask you that question, you know, are, are you, um, are you the one, you know, that's, that's able to answer that question? No, you just got started. Right. So what I would tell them is I would say, you know, Joe, I just got started with the company. All right. And, and to be honest with you, you know, I'm not the best person to answer any of those questions. I would sure hate to give you any misinformation. I would sure hate to give you the wrong information. Okay. I'm not qualified. That's the word I was looking for. Jeez. Ah, it slipped me for a minute. So I would say, I would say, that's a great question, Joe. And I'm actually not qualified to even answer that question. I would sure hate to give you the wrong answer. Okay. Um, so uh, but I would, but what I could do is I could actually have my, my manager, my hiring director, you know, reach out to you and get you in touch. They're way more qualified to answer those questions for you. And, uh, and I think they'll be able to break it down a little bit better. So, you know, how about I'll get in touch with our hiring director and we could talk about, you know, possibly, you know, discussing if it makes sense. We could talk about discussing possibly if it makes sense for you to maybe possibly move forward and, and take and look at an interview opportunity, something like that, right? So you could deflect the answers with a true statement. It's a true statement. Like if you came to me right now and said, hey, can you work on my teeth? 
And I said, sure, I'll work on your teeth. And then I, I'm not qualified to do so. That's pretty messed up, right? Mm -hmm. So that's like them asking you questions about the career. And you're like, sure, I'll answer them. But you're not qualified to answer those questions, right? You can ruin their whole entire career before it gets started, right? If I work on your teeth and I'm not qualified, what are the potential consequences of that? You can die, you know? Like your teeth, the vein goes right down to your heart. Like, it's connected. So I can, just like you can kill somebody's career before it even gets started by you trying to answer questions that you're not qualified to answer, I can literally kill somebody by trying to work on their teeth when I'm not qualified to work on their teeth, you know? So it's not like you're being like, like trying to skirt away. Like, dude, I'd love to work on your teeth, bro, but I'm not qualified. I'd love to answer your questions, but I'm not qualified to do so. I'd rather you just talk to, uh, you know, the hiring manager. They're way more qualified and then give answer any question way better than I could. Okay, you know? I don't even want to embarrass myself trying to answer any questions. And you'd be honest with them. Is that bad? Like, are you trying to like skirt away from answering their questions? Like been being manipulative with it? Any, uh, are you, or are you being honest? What is it? You're just being honest with them, you know? So when they ask you questions, don't answer them because you're not supposed to, it's not your job. <laughs> it's, so it's, it's the easiest thing to do, you know? So anyways, hopefully that helps because it's going to happen. If you're out there and you're talking, they're going to ask and then boom, you got that right back at them and you keep it moving. You get them set, get them in, get in the process and the rest, the rest will happen the way it's supposed to happen. You know? How far do personal recruits have to get? Like, do they have to get, get their license and come to the office before you get your 750? Correct. So they have to be hired within those 90 days. As long as they're hired. So as long as they come in and, and, and we, we hired them within your 90 days, now from that point forward, they're on the list and you're good, okay? You will now, when those people get their license and submit one piece of business with the company, they become active, you get 750. As soon as they become active with the company, you get 750. But we got to get them in and get them hired before those 90 days are up so they make your list. Right. And now they keep that list. And then if any of those people that you hired come through with their license, every time they come through 750, 750. But keep in mind, not everyone that we hire gets their license. I've hired a lot of people. I honest with you, the 12, 13 years, you know what I mean? There's people that I've hired, and guess what? They never got their license. Never, never got it right? So not everybody that you hire, you're not going to be the exception. I promise you, you're not going to bat a thousand, okay? You might be pretty good, but you're not going to be that good. Eventually, eventually, you're going to strike out one day, all right? Not one, no baseball player ever went, never struck out. Nobody ever went through American income and batted a thousand with every person they brought in. Everybody got their license. <laughs> so, so you got to remember that too, you know? So if you bring in 10, you're probably not going to get $750 for all 10 because all 10 are probably not going to get their license. So you have to keep that in mind. You know, some of them just will never be able to pass the test. Some of them, they're, they're, they'll, they'll give up before they even get started. Who knows what happens? But the better quality people that you bring, higher propensity, more of them pass, right? And the better of a coach that you are with building the relationship and getting them through, coaching them up, you might be great at it. You might be a nine out of 10 person. You know what I mean? You might be getting great quality people. You're putting them in a great system. You're coaching them up great. And they're all passing at a great rate. That's phenomenal, you know? So. And our recruits, like, because of remote working, you know, they can be from anywhere in the country at this point. Yes, now you're talking. That's never has been an option. I broke all the records in a company and you had to be in the office every day or you couldn't even work with me. Think about that. And I could only recruit from like the people who lived in this zip code, right? Mm -hmm. Now we can recruit all over and you can work from all over and you don't even gotta drive here or drive there. It's literally uh, amazing. And then 
if you look at your, like when I started on top of that, there was no Instagram or Facebook 12 years ago. Like not for me, I, I wasn't an Instagram, Facebook guy. I don't think Instagram was even out in 2008, to be honest with you, you know? And if it was, I wasn't on it. And, if, and I did have a Facebook account, but believe me, I didn't know what Facebook was. I was just on it because like my friend in college got me on it or something, you know? So anyways, um, it, do, what's, how many friends does the average person have on Facebook? Um, how'd you find that you remember did i say that i think you might have and i just remembered so I'll be honest with you there. how many friends does the average person have on facebook 338. Man, that's weak. What kind of friends are they? I don't even have Facebook. You don't even have Facebook. I don't use social media. That's free advertising. That's true. That's where I make a lot of money. If I didn't make no money, I probably wouldn't really use it. Um, well, that's stupid. I'm sorry about saying stupid, but 338, I thought it was like a thousand, you know? So, um, well, what's 338 times 338 though? So if you're an average person, you have 338 friends, right? And then they all have what? 338 friends. So times 338 times 338. And that's 114,000 people. So even if you're an average, super low average, 338 type of person on Facebook, right? You still have a reach. You're 338, no 338. You're one person away from 114,000 people. But for me, I don't know how many friends I got on Facebook. How do you find that, that out? I don't even know. There's got to be a way to show you somehow. Oh. 4236. So I got 4,236, right? Tom Mackin. He has 562. One of my friends has 562. Uh, Mickey Breathwaite. How many just got got? Um, I don't know how many he got. Uh, friends. We got 80 mutual friends. I don't know how many friends this guy got or not. But I'm, I'm just trying to see like how many friends do these people got? This one got 4,900 4, friends, this guy. So one of my friends got 4,900 friends. You know, so, so you know what I'm, I'm saying? Like, that's just one of them got 4,900. So if you think about it, if you have, thought, I got 4,200 friends, and then if those 4,200 friends have 1,000 friends on average, because maybe my friends have more friends than the average friend person has, you know, or something like that, What's the possibilities of how many people I can really touch if I just search through Facebook? And really all you need to be an MGA is 15 people and you'll be making five grand a week. And that you need to get 15 people from where? All over the country. You could get one from Florida, one from Colorado, one from Texas, one from Alabama, one from South Carolina, two people from Arizona, three people from Illinois, four in Ohio, one in Indiana, and three over in Pittsburgh. And then they can go and do the same thing because their cousin lives in Indiana. His brother lives in Maine. His best friend from college, he actually just moved to North Carolina, right? The guy he played football with lives in Georgia. So then that one guy who lives in Indiana, he got 10 more people that are going to be coming onto your squad, right? Before we could never do this because they would have to move to Chicago and live right here and be here every day and drive to the appointments and be in training class. And you, if you want to come work here, you got to interview, right? You have to interview. Well, how are you going to interview? You got to be here for the interview. There was no virtual. You had to be here in person. And then when you were done, you had to fill out a piece of paper, a physical piece of paper. And if you didn't fill out that piece of paper, I went back and I went through the pieces of paper of everybody filled out and I called back the ones that we liked. And then out of the ones that we like, guess what? We had to book them for what? An interview. And they had to come back for a final interview, which was where? Virtual? No, we didn't have virtual. So if you wanted to hire your boy, your boy would have to come back here for a face-to-face -face third interview. And then after that, they wanted to come in for training. Guess where the training was? 
in here every single day, face to face. And after training, you get in your car and drive out into the field and see clients face to face. So for me to build the organization that we did build was a, a lot of extra physical restraints and constraints that are no longer there anymore. We are not bounded by the, the physicalities that we were before. Uh, I don't know how else to explain it to you, man, but we didn't have to drive to appointments. Like today, when you get out of training class, you get in a car with your manager, you and your manager drive an hour or even more. Sometimes you got to go through traffic, you're dealing with snow, all kind of stuff. You get to your first appointment, they're not there. They're not there. So then you go to your next appointment, you present to them. Then you go to your next appointment, they're not there. You go to your next appointment, you present to them. And then you get out of there, it's 8.30. And you're like, all right, we got this nine o'clock. Let's slide over to this. Now you're like, hurry up, you're rushing. You get to that pitch blackout, pitch blackout. And you're walking up to somebody's door, knocking on their door at nine o'clock at night, getting in their house. Then you go into their house and you don't get out of there because there's a late o'clock appointment. So they want to talk to you. They don't want to bullshit with you. The kids are sleeping. They don't care, right? So now it's 11 o'clock at night and you're like, all right, I'm going to get out of here. And they would still want to show you the basement. He wants to show you a tractor. He wants to show you his new, you know, uh, project he's working on in, his, in the workshop, whatever, right? So you leave there at 11, 1130. And guess how far you got to drive? Two hours. You got to drive an, at least an hour to get back home. But me and you went out there together, right? So where's your car at? Back in the office. At the office. So that's where me and you would go. Office. And then guess where I'd have to drive all the way back to my house? You have to drive all the way back to your house, right? Hey, bro, let's have a good night. Hey, get some rest, man. I'll see you back up there at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. I'd let my, if you're a trainee, I'd let you sleep till 9. I'd be there at 8, right? I didn't leave the house till 11. We didn't get back to the office till 12. I didn't get out of my house till 12, 30, 1 o'clock. Right. And plus, I put all those miles on my car all day, all that gas that I had to spend in my gas tank. Right. Do any of you guys have to do that? Today? And guess what time my first appointment is on Saturday morning, 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Guess where that is, is at? Back in the same area. So I have to leave my house at seven. No. I got to get donuts on my way there. So I got to leave at like 6.45 because I got to stop and get donuts. And at 8 o'clock in the morning on Saturday, I show up with donuts and a smile. And that's my first appointment of the day, doing it all over again. It would be nice if I could just roll out of bed, get a quick shower, walk down into my office and go, hey, good morning. Zoom, right? That's what you guys can do now. It's amazing. It's amazing. So you, you got to just understand, you know, appreciate a little bit because it's real. It's real. You know, um, we have more time. You have more time to make more calls and see more people than I did. It's the truth. So anyways, um, hey, it ain't going to be easy. I'll tell you that, you know, the numbers make it look easy. They make it look simple, but don't confuse simple with easy. It's still hard work. It's still hard work. Uh, but it'll be worth it. You ever hear it's not it's not going to be easy, but it'll be worth it. Like that's that's what this will be the hardest thing you've ever done in your life. If somebody hasn't told you that already, you know, and you're not realizing that yet. If you do it this the right way and you're pushing and you're pushing and you're pushing, that's that's doing it the right way. Uh this, this will be one of the hardest, probably the hardest thing you've ever done in your life, but it'll be the most rewarding thing that you've, you've, you've ever done for your entire family for the next, you know, I don't even know, man, the next freaking hundred generations. This is it for me, you know, uh, that's what we're looking at this at. So anyways, um, I got to uh, let you guys go. Uh, we, went, we went just straight, no breaks today or nothing. Um, so you guys did a great job and uh, great first week under under your belt. You guys got your first week under your belt. Uh, you still got to got to got to put in a good night tonight and and a good weekend this weekend. Um, but uh, but know that you you guys are getting better. And uh, when you work out, sometimes you don't see the results 
if you look at it day to day, week to week, even month to month. But when you pick your head up, even three weeks from now, you're going to start to see some results. You'll feel it, you know. Three months from now, you'll feel it. And at the end of the year, you'll feel like just like so much more uh, comfortable and confident and knowledgeable and you have wisdom. Um, but you got to give yourself a chance to get there, you know, to get that experience, right? So all experience is not all the best experience, but the, you know, sometimes it's the bad experiences that end up being best experiences to make us better. Um, but I'm going to let you guys go on that. Uh, have a great weekend, and uh, I'll see you guys Monday. And let's get a bunch of people in the agency meeting to rock with us. See you guys.